Hi, my name is Karen Vonnecker, Corel Painter Master Elite, and I'd like to introduce you to a new brush pack called Artisan Markers. Markers are one of my favorite brushes to work with. I love working with the colors that they create and the fact that they build upon each other and, and become very saturated with each additional brush stroke that you lay down. These brushes also are wonderful for working with texture, so if you're looking to add texture in certain parts of your drawing, you can certainly do that by evoking the papers panel and applying dab option and apply dab stencil based on paper or flow map or texture. So let's get started with the first brush. I'm going to come back to the blending marker, but I want to talk about the first brush called Brush Tip. Recently, markers have come out with brushes that actually have more of a brushy tip instead of a hard tip. Um, so for that reason, this brush is very close to that. It emulates the tip of a brush, so it's very soft and has some edges. Um, and some hairs at the end that you'll see. You can see that this brush is also set to texture, so let's go ahead and take it back to more of a basic uh, paper texture so it's a little bit softer. And then we could also just take off the Apply Dab Stencil and have just a very flat brush stroke. And I think that that's more of what I wanna, wanted uh, uh, to show right as we start off here. So the very first rule when working with uh, markers is that they build up and they build and they saturate with each additional brush stroke. So let me explain what I mean by that. The best way to work with markers is of course on layers and working with your opacity sliders as well. So I'm going to start off at the very top here with just a quick brush stroke and this brush what I'm doing here is it's one continuous brush stroke. I'm not lifting my stylus off of the Wacom surface, okay? Or your tablet surface, whatever you're working with. Now, if I want to build this up in terms of value, this is where it gets fun. And this is where uh, you, you learn to work with these brushes and how they build up. Well, very similar to watercolor, as I lay down another brush stroke on top of what I've already done, you can see that that begins to saturate and get darker. So this is the real beauty of working with uh, markers, uh, the way that they build and they build on top of each other in terms of uh, the value of the color. Now I can also bring the opacity slider down and add a new layer or work directly on this layer here if there's just maybe a certain part of the uh, image that I want to darken a little. Okay, so if I just wanted to show maybe a little shadow here. So each brush stroke, as you see, gets darker and darker and builds. So that is the way that you work with these marker brushes. This is the most effective way. We'll go back to the first brush, which, which is the blending marker. And I don't use this a lot except for areas that I just might want to soften the edge a little bit. So you can see as I work through and apply a little bit of this blending, you can see it's a nice wet blender. So it really pulls those colors out nicely and you can get some really nice effects. So that's the blending marker, the brush tip, and let's go to the calligraphy marker. This brush can also be optimized for using in the with the art pen, the Wacom art pen. If you change this brush, let's see what the, the basic setting for this brush is bearing, that is the default, but if you change that to rotation and set the angle step to from four to six and the angle range to 360, you'll get a nice, uh, a really nice brush in terms of um, the calligraphy that you can affect, create with it. So it's a really nice brush for this, those quick little calligraphy effects that you might be looking for um, in a specific uh, project you're working on. Okay, the next brush is chisel, chisel tip. And again, this brush, um, 
I would use it, you know, one stroke. And then if you're looking to darken that area, you'll go back over it with another stroke. And it will continue to get darker and darker as you build. So just remember to keep that stylus pressure, firm pressure on your stylus. Do not let up. And then when you do take your stylus up off of the tablet surface and go back over it, you can see how you start to saturate those areas. And they'll become darker and darker as you go. Okay, that's chisel tip. Chow Grainy is a grainy um, brush, and we'll go ahead and pick up another kind of green color here. I can get to it. And again, I'm not lifting my stylus up. I'm just doing one continual brush stroke here. So you can get th through things really quick and fast. This would be good for tree edges, for, for creating more of a uh, a rough edge and then as I lift my stylus and go back over those areas you can see how those areas become darker in value. So really good for creating your foliage, um, bushes, and trees. Okay, that is Chow Grainy. Extra fine tip is just what it says. It's a very fine tip brush. You can use it, um, you know, uh, you can see where I used it a lot when I was creating these little sketches here of the people. So it's a good one for that. The next brush is fine tip, same type of brush, um, just a little bit uh, finer tip, a little bit bigger tip on it and it's also very sensitive to paper texture. So for example if I wanted to add maybe some texture to the clothing I'll pick um, something like metallic bubbles and let's pick a blue here and maybe go into his shirt and put in some color. Again remember as you do this the uh, each brush stroke is going to build on the next. If I wanted to show some texture maybe down here, be the look of some stones. Remember also that you can use your random grain rotation and you get a very uh, a different pattern as you lay down the paper texture. Okay. The hatching marker, again you can optimize this brush for the art pen by going and changing the expression to rotation, keeping the angle range at 360 and the step from 4 to 6. We'll pick a nice blue color here and you can see that it's kind of a hatching brush that you can hatch through kind of working up and down and then sideways and up and down and then sideways got a nice hatching type brush the next brush is large and that's exactly what it is it's a very large brush it's actually one of my favorites uh, in the marker brush category um, I use it a lot for just background areas where I just want kind of a flat color and I'm not looking for a lot of value change there. So it's one that I use for skies. Um, you know, I might use it here for going down these stairs. One continuous brush stroke, not lifting my stylus, not until I want some shadow coming in. I can make this brush smaller. 
and maybe create a little bit of a shadow effect. Okay, large. The next brush is Magic Flat, and this is a flat uh, marker brush. Again, you can use it for uh, filling in large areas of one single color, and then if you need to go in and do some value changes there, you can. Something like this and every time I lift that brush and go back over an area where it's going to get more saturated. Next brush is the Magic Flat Eraser and I love having an eraser. Um, this is really cool because you can erase with texture as well. So if you pick a paper texture and you want to actually erase with some texture, you can do that. Otherwise, you can just go with your default paper and use that to kind of pull out certain areas or go and take off Apply Dab Stencil and just have a very flat eraser, which is what I tend to use uh, in specific areas where I'm looking to create some highlights or I just need to refine an area. And again this can be optimized um, by using the art pen also uh, and the same would apply in the size option. Change that to rotation instead of bearing. Magic Marker and this one again is a nice brush for uh, it's a medium tip um, again the same applies here as you go back over an area you're going to get more saturation medium brush tip and this again is a brushy type of marker and I'll use it just to fill in this area here Let's maybe pick this yellow. And again, every time I lift that brush up, I'm going to get more saturation. Darker and darker. Okay. The next brush is Sandy Marker. And this one I really like for, uh, again, creating texture. And it has a lot of texture already built into it. Um, or you can just take off, take off the Apply Dab Stencil in Painter and use it as a flat brush. And I use this a lot for uh, stairs, you know, siding, uh, sketching. So it's a, it's a good one for that. Okay, Sandy Marker. And the last brush is Sketch, and that's exactly what it is. It's just a nice little marker brush that you can use for sketching. Um, I really like this one as well. Another fun brush to use. You can also use it for areas where you need to fill in and do some shadow work, or just create some darker values. Maybe we'll paint here. And this worked out really well for clothes.
And our, let's finish off by giving our little dog some color. <laughs> and there we go. So these are the artisan markers for Corel Painter, and I hope you really enjoy working with them. I certainly had a lot of fun with them. Take care.